uh, because what we do is it's a way of making sure everything's working the way it's supposed to working, work, verb, the audio, the picture, all that kind of stuff. So, and we talk just about anything. We, you can send a question in now, but we won't answer the questions until about three o'clock when the regular show starts. So, I don't know about you folks, but um, I'm now preparing for breeding season, and we're going to be talking about that. But I put my birds together a little early. I put my birds together this weekend. Now, they've been separated since last August, so they um, haven't been breeding, but I, I like to give them a rest. So what I'm going to do Friday, Saturday, Sunday uh, is um, basically I take all of the floor covering away from the floors. Uh, as most of you know, I use our floor covering that's made in uh, Belgium. And what I do is every six months, although if you read the bags, you can go up to a year without cleaning the floor of your loft, which sounds weird, um, but it works. It's what I do. I change it every six months, not every year, but um, these, this floor covering is, is uh, uh, lava, all crushed up, and in it, is, it looks like granules, and in it is also an anticoxidiosis, which is uh, most uh, common thing that a pigeon can get. So what I do is I scrape the floors, clean right down to the bare wood. Then what I do as a drying agent, I sprinkle Belgium white on my floors. And then after that, I put down new floor covering. Roughly an eight by eight loft um, will take about three to four uh, uh, inches or three to four bags of the floor covering. I'm, I'm trying to remember to look at a new place. Uh, you folks, they like to do this to confuse me. We used to look at a little black dot down on the bottom left, um, and that's what we were told to do. But um, Gina, for whatever reason, put it up in the upper right. So if you see me wandering off, that's why I'm wandering. But anyway, I love the floor covering. Uh, one of the big benefits also, besides being uh, uh, anticoxidiosis agent in it is the fact that it, it, it is very, very, very absorbent. So you get very little moisture in there, and moisture is a real killer when it comes to pigeons, literally and figuratively. What was the new word I talked to you the other day? Do you remember now? A couple weeks ago? Yeah. I don't remember. Uh, oh, I know but what I it did was. Use narcissistic. It was... No. no, no uh, narcissistic. Um, uh, tell us, Veronica. You said they use it in New Brighton a lot. Oh, it's, a, it's a case where people, especially... Uh, no. No. Where you have family nepotism. work, nepotism. Yeah, nepotism. That's what it was. We were talking about uh, the family. You can come right in. We're just uh, talking a little bit. Oh, he's not bringing me a Coke or a Pepsi. So anyway, uh, one of the things you folks know over the years, I've always told you whenever possible, put your perches on one wall, two walls at the most. You can bring it in. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And um, the reason I do that, and I have all of my perches on one wall, almost all of the droppings drop right straight to the floor uh, and makes it very easy to clean. I just get a cardboard box, put it on the floor in the loft or on top of the floor covering, and I have a pitchfork. I pick up all of the droppings that are underneath the perch. So literally in two minutes, I've already got rid of 99% of the droppings so they're all there. Then the next thing I do is I rake the, the uh, uh, excuse me, I remove all of the floor covering. Then I put down new bags of floor covering. I'm ready to go. I literally can clean my lofts. And as I've told, shared with you before, I used to have 13 sections. I'm down to nine right now, but I can do it all in a day. It sounds weird, but I don't have scraping to do with the exception of perches, and I try to use a perch. I like the Space Saver, and I like the, uh, is it the tea perch, Gina? Tea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the tea perch, which are so easy to clean. So you're getting ready for breeding season. The first thing you want to do is to um, to uh, clean your loss. The other thing you should consider is now is the time to vaccinate. Um, we'll be talking about the vaccinations in our show, um, but um, with, with you, you may not be breeding until uh, after the first of the year or something like that, but what's to prevent you from vaccinating now? Get that out of the way, especially uh, right now, you probably have a lot of 
birds that you didn't have last year, especially young birds, uh, and it takes two shots, about 14 uh, days apart. Is that correct? If you have not vaccinated right. previously. If, thank you. If, you have, if you've got birds, either you're not sure, or they're young ones that you raised from last year, now's the time to vaccinate those because it does take two shots. And the beauty right now, uh, as of last year, was that both PMV and paratyphoid are water-based. So you can vaccinate basically at the same time. I think you can put them both in the same syringe, if I remember right. Um, you usually recommend not to. Okay, but you line them all up and they're water-based. The other one was oil-based and uh, wasn't a, a good situation, but now we have them water-based. So, um, nice to talk to you about this pre-show. Um, I invited Gina before we started to um, just jump in anytime she wanted, but there was some snide remark about how I could talk 10 minutes on my head without stopping. <laughs> and it's true. So anyway, uh, we're right up against 3 o'clock, and we wait until 3 o'clock because that's the advertised time. Uh, so there'll be people uh, tuning in real quick now. But just think, by you tuning in 10 minutes early, you got some other information that won't be on the, the, uh, the, the show itself. So at 3 o'clock, uh, you haven't said a word yet, have you? I did. Oh, did you? Two I said three. a couple words. Two or three. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also, um, you're, well, we're, we're going to three minutes. Of, I mean, another minute, so we better wait. It says 2.59. We've already got a question. Um, we'll be reading that when the clock says it's 3 o'clock. Right, Ron, Rhonda? Veronica? Mm -hmm. I, there's 3 o'clock. Do you mind? Will you do your welcome one part? I'm going to take a sip of my Jack Daniels and Coke here. <laughs> welcome to Voice on Facebook. Um, my name is Gina. This is Jerry, as you all know. Um, we Today is our special Facebook show for the holidays. We usually do a special for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And um, probably about halfway through the show, we'll be discussing that. We've got a few other things that we need to get out to everybody first. Um, one thing is we we have been out of some products for a while. We do have 4-in-1 and all-in-1 back in stock right now. Um, so if you want some, you need to call us now and get it while we have it in stock. Um, yeah, because we got it in, but the supply at this point is very limited because going to the shows that we've gone to and packing for the next couple of shows... We're very low on it, so if you've been waiting for three and one or four and one, four and one and all in one, all in one. I'm sorry, which we didn't have it at um, the Big Apple show. We were out of it, but we did get it um, while we was at the Big Apple, okay. so it is available now. Um, do you want to go read the question now? Sure. Okay, um, Joseph, I had my bird separated for the winter. Apparently, I made a mistake. I have one male that has made it with two females. Two eggs hatched today, the other two shortly. It appears he keeps both hens in the nest and they need to sneak food. Suggestions? I was chuckling to myself when uh, I read that and then Gina read it back to me. It brought back memories of my youth. When I was 18, <laughs> 17 or 18, this is a true story because he had a male with two females. I was engaged to two different girls at the same time. <laughs> Did I tell you that story? I was, yeah. One of then I was in the Air Force, and, and then I had when I went into the Air Force, uh, one of the girls talked to the other girls, and, and I got a dear John. <laughs> Both of them. He called me all kinds of names. Which I'm were scandalous. Sure did. Anyways, Joe, I hope you don't mind me calling you. Well, I'll call you Joseph. Um, that male is a, uh, evidently very aggressive because uh, it appears as though he's trying to protect his nest to keep both of the, those hens in line. There's really absolutely nothing you can do but cross your fingers, so to speak. Uh, those two hens and that male, uh, if you've got four young coming, there's a darn good chance one or two of them are not going to make it. Because as you know, uh, the first egg out, uh, even though there's only usually a day and a half, two days difference, uh, one's always smaller than the other, and the smaller one struggles as it is. So with, it, with four eggs, I'm thinking you're probably going to have two strong ones, 
or two weak and two weak ones, or all of the second hatch could be very weak compared to the first hatch. I don't want to make it sound complicated. So my suggestion is absolutely nothing. Don't do a thing with one exception. Um, make sure that you have feed in the nest box itself, feed and water. Um, and it's, you can do it if you have the right coop cups and so forth or make, make something so that it doesn't tip over. Um, because now you don't have to do that right away assuming you don't have those three birds locked up. If they're not locked up, the parents can go down and eat and drink, of course. But as soon as those birds are old enough to eat or drink, um, then you want to make sure the feed is in there. And when you put the feed in there, put in something, uh, a no corn feed. What's the name of our conditioner, isn't it? Breeder conditioner, no yeah. corn. Put in a breeder conditioner with no corn because when those birds start to eat, the babies start to eat, they can only eat the real small grains. Now I'm talking about after the parents have uh, uh, stopped giving them uh, pigeon milk uh, and the birds are, the parents are going to start still continue to feed them, but it won't be long before them four, two, three or four young ones are out of the nest bowl and want to eat and drink and pays particular attention to cleanliness because now you've got two, four young ones at the beginning and the parents um, going to be a lot of poop in that lot. Um, so wouldn't hurt to clean it out every day and change the uh, floor, the uh, nest bowl material that you're using, whatever you're using, change that on a regular basis because it's going to collect and when, when it collects like that, you're going to have some issues. So. You need a drink after that, don't you? Yeah. The only thing I didn't, I didn't understand, did you understand it? Uh, and then they need to Sneak food. I'm not sure what that meant. Um, I don't know. But Joseph, if uh, you get a chance, send us in. Just a, I'm not sure what you need. You meant when you says in the nest and they need to sneak food. Uh, I'm not sure what you meant by that. So just send in another question. Okay. But thanks anyways. No, thanks for the question. As you noticed, somebody forgot their foy shirt today. And he's not wearing glasses either. You guys, you guys watching the show just, just don't know. We have women all over the place and they're always picking on me. Veronica does it. Oh. Veronica mentioned when I sat down that I didn't have my shirt. I wouldn't even um, notice it. No, and now you mentioned it. I don't have my shirt. What the hell is the difference? Whether I have my shirt or not? <laughs> you know, being who I am and retired right. and I have certain things that I can take advantage Absolutely. of and one of them is, is not wearing that, that shirt. And right. nobody really noticed, or well, maybe you did notice they it, did. Um, that I'm not wearing my glasses. I had cataract surgery on both eyes, just amazing. Um, the, when the, after about four days on my left mm -hmm. eye, I could not believe the difference in my vision as far as brightness and color, um, just amazing. And then I got my right eye is still recovering, uh, so I don't need my glasses anymore to drive, to do normal things like we're doing right now. I can read the screen, um, but if I'm reading a book, I do need uh, the glasses, so I don't need my glasses anymore. That's a great thing. Awesome. Okay, so he said, when the females come out to eat, the male hurdles them back to the nest. That's one hell of a cock bird you got there. <laughs> wow. Don't do anything, because think of it now. Um, those two hens may come out at the same time. He's not going to be sure which one to go after. He's going to go after one, and the other one's going to sneak some feed. But believe me, they won't starve to death. It's not, I would not worry about it. I'm not... Um, joking with you, so to speak. Uh, don't worry about it. They will get their feed one way or another. <laughs> or if you're really uh, concerned, you can always put those cups in the, into the uh, uh, nest box itself. But you did not reply. The question is, are they all in a nest, bowl, a nest box? And do you lock the nest box? So, Joseph, they we're going to have an ongoing conversation during this show. So now you have a question. Are they in a nest box that's locked? Okay. Um, 
I'm going to guess now. But anyways, uh, he said his birds came from you. <laughs> Got to be great, pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the auction. We're going to talk a little bit about the auction. We did say that we were going to have an auction um, this week and it would end on Friday. But we were unable to do the auction this week. It's just been um, a little Heck, hectic. Well, I've been on vacation for a week. and Yes, yeah, somebody you know, went on Things just didn't run as smooth as uh, when I'm normally here. No, so it sure did. Everybody fell behind because they had questions and I wasn't around to answer them and just brought everything to a standstill. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> So the next auction will be next Friday. So the birds will be posted with the pictures on Monday. It's, or as soon as I can get them to. To Veronica. Yeah, might even have them on Friday if we can get them up there. Okay. Because it's going to be pretty fantastic. I'm going to talk about that. Yes, you go, go ahead. ahead. You can talk about okay. that right now. Um, I have uh, been asking a lot of people as time goes by, uh, to contribute birds to the auction. We have an auction every uh, every show. Um, the birds are birds that have been contributed or donated with the express idea they're going to be auctioned off. So I got a call from Bob Van Jerry, mm -hmm. pronounced Bob Van Jerry, and turns out he'd been watching the show and he and I have talked before. And he said, Jerry, the local borough, city, whatever it was, zoning, has told me I have to get rid of one of my lofts. He has two. Mm -hmm. And uh, would you be able to take some of my birds? And he said, I'd like to uh, put them in the auction. He said, I thought oh, that would be great. Well, he sent me those birds. Now he says, Jerry, these are going to be some good pigeons. I got them and I couldn't believe the quality of those pigeons. I've seen good pigeons. I'm not saying they're the best I've ever seen. How do you say that when, after so many years? But they're really excellent pigeons. Most of them come with pedigrees. They're birds from Continental Breeding Station. They're birds from Mike Gannis. They're birds from some of the top breeders in the United States. Three of the birds that are in there, uh, he paid $500 each for those birds. So they're going, I must say, they're probably going to be the Best, now I better not say that. Best is a tough word uh, that, that implies somebody else's birds weren't as good. Does that make sense to you? Yes. But these are really, really top quality. And with the breeding season right around the corner, you may want to consider uh, bidding on these birds uh, and adding them to your loft now so that when you start breeding, you'll have them. You won't go wrong. There's one little grizzle. Oh, God, I love that bird. I wish I could bit on them, but there's a grizzle in there that's just gorgeous uh, amongst other birds. Most of them, are, as always, are blue bars and uh, blue checks. In fact, Gromus, who watches this show on a regular basis and, and has uh, sat in for me and has sat in with us, um, he was at my loft because he knew I had a pair of tipplers, and he's a big tippler man. <laughs> And he walked in and he said, oh, my God. He said, where did you get these birds? And I told him the story. He says, well, he says, do you mind if I buy a couple pair? I says, Gromus, I can't do that. I appreciate you. He's willing, he was willing to pay a rather large amount of money to handpick those birds. And I said, no, Bob sent those birds to me. And a deal is a deal. A promise is a promise. I will never sell any of these auction birds unless they go on to an auction. So that gives an idea. Uh, and also, uh, I have a good friend who, who was secretary to Combine for years and has some really good pigeons that did well in one loft race down in uh, Florida. His name's Tom Erdner. He delivered 12 birds to me last week. Um, and once again, uh, you touch them, you feel them. It's like the, the feather is like silk. Gorgeous eyes. Uh, so uh, we'll be having these uh, homers over the next um, six or eight shows because I've got quite a few of them. And I urge you to watch those shows um, and don't think you're going to get them for 50 or 75 or $100 a pair. Um, $100 is dirt cheap for $50 a bird. As I say, some of them 
and I probably won't mention this again, but you're watching this show. If you see a grizzle, he paid $500, and I think from the gamma slot, but I'm not sure. So I'm uh, going to have some great birds. Can I go on too long about no. that? Okay. Can I check that off now? You can. Okay. Right. I'm going to mention again about the auction. If you place a bid, please... Um, Please have all intentions of calling us and pay for those birds that you bid on, that you won. Um, the last auction we had two people that did not call us. I've messaged them. I've called them to no avail. So um, if you if you do place if you do win on win the auction and you don't call us, you don't you know things happen. I know, but all you have to do is call and say, look, I know I won, but. Whatever this happened, I can't do no, it right now. I don't have the money right now. I thought right. it would but I we have talked about this, and we'll talk about it again. I'm sure these people who bid and then don't buy the birds, you never hear from them again. Can we not ban them from? Bidding? We do. Yeah. Well, I, so before I was so rudely interrupted. Yeah. Before you, <laughs> I'll be quiet while I interrupt you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so if that happens, you are banned from any future bidding, um, on our auctions. Um, I think it's pretty easy. We're, we're lenient. We give you plenty of time. We call, we text. That takes a lot of time. None of that money goes to us. It's all for, for the NBA Legacy Fund Trust. Um, everything we do is for them. Nothing comes to Foy's. Nothing comes to Jerry. Nothing comes to us. Um, and it's a lot of time. Out of out of our schedule that we take to do that, um, so please have consideration for us for the legacy to to call us and pay for the birds that you bid on. And I was looking in the wrong spot the whole time. I'm looking in the middle, not the. What's my idea to camera. move it? <laughs> oh, Joseph is back. Are oh, you done? I'm sorry. I'm done. Okay. Um, uh, you read that. I think it's an interesting story. Okay. So I should put feed in the nest area opposed to the flight pen? Actually, I have the mail in my kitchen. He follows me around. I have the back door open so he comes in to visit. He loves a bath in my kitchen sink. My mail I got from you was taken down by a hawk. I raised the babies by hand. He follows me everywhere. He, had, he has now two nests. I admire that man. The man, the, the male bird. That's a heck of a bird, and he's got a pet there. So you're certainly doing something right, Joseph. Mm -hmm. um, I would move the feed into the nest boxes as best you can, because if uh, uh, if he drives the hen away from feeding, um, she might go back. But if she's got feed, that's a little little bit of a backup. So everything else, I think you're doing right. You uh, you're doing. You must be spending time with your pigeons for them to become that tame and for you to have the patience to hand feed uh, two babies. Uh, uh, my compliments to you. Just keep doing what you're doing. Oh, there are, and he, he's, he got some of our Birmingham rollers. I thought I was assuming they were racing homers, but he's got the Birmingham's. Thanks, nice talking to you, Joseph. All right, we got some other stuff we want to talk yep. about. Um, so we wanted to talk about the PMV vaccine. We are out of it right now. And the reason being is that the... Um, Manufacturer. No. Mm -hmm. huh. What The batch that they have right now expires in January. So we didn't want to buy it right now, being that it's so close to January and a lot of people want a longer expiration date. So that's why we're out of it. We're waiting on the manufacturer to see when they're going to make another batch so we can have a much longer expiration date. Um, soon as we find that out, we will let you know. Uh, we got an email into them, and um, we're waiting on a response. Yep. So but we do have paratyphoid, but no PMV right now. And it is important um, that you consider vaccinating your birds. Uh, maybe I already said that, but your time to vaccinate them is before breeding so uh, when you're giving two shots if they've never been vaccinated before um so now you 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 have to do it two or three weeks before you put your birds together um so if, i'm not saying you can't do it after their birds together but it's better to do it now okay. and on the uh, pmv it's once a year correct unless the birds have never been vaccinated give them 
twice the first and then the booster two weeks later. And then a year later, uh, the birds that you vaccinated this season only need one shot. The birds that have never been vaccinated before and um, the young ones that you've raised, they get two shots right. once a year. The paratyphoid is every six months. Once again, if they've never been vaccinated, two shots. If they have been vaccinated, one shot. But the big difference between the two vaccines is the PMV is once a year. Paratyphoid, which you've heard me say before, is almost a, uh, what's the word, um, <laughs> across the country. It's, it's an epidemic. Oh. Uh, I get never a day goes by where I don't get an inquiry about paratyphoid uh, or we talk about it and discuss that's what they have. So um, paratyphoid is very, very important. In fact, I would choose, if I had to choose between the two because of cost, I would choose the paratyphoid vaccine before I would choose the PMV vaccine mm -hmm. um, because paratyphoid is uh, so tough to get rid of. Once you've got it, uh, it's so, so tough to get rid of. And oh, we wanted to talk about the gentleman who asked about um, um, yes. PMV and vaccine. Would you Go like ahead. me to read it? Yeah. Okay. James asks, when a bird has a salmonella infection or gets PMV, I have often heard people say that it was will always be a carrier. Please explain about please explain more about what it means to be a carrier despite recovering from the bacterial infection or viral infection. Does this mean that the bird has the potential to spread the infection for the rest of its life? Okay, first name is Robert. James. James. Um, the information that you received is incorrect. That is not the case. Um, what I'm going to do is you have his contact information or maybe call or email four ways and give us your phone call, a phone number. When I get home tonight or if I can't get to it tonight, uh, do it tomorrow. Uh, and I want to do a research. One of them, either PMV or paratyphoid, you can have a, a carrier. And in one of them, uh, you, they never have a carrier. So rather than giving uh, false information or um, unresearched information, uh, you give me your contact uh, information and I'll get back to you. Okay. Um, we have an announcement that um, just happened yesterday. We will now be attending the Des Moines, Iowa show next week. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I was surprised to hear that. As was I, because that's a long drive. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a 14 and a half hour drive. Uh, the two girls are going to be there, Gina and Kim. Um, did you want to mention some more, uh, the most yeah. important thing? Um, so get the word out. If you know people that are going, get the word out. If you want to place a pre-order, call us as soon as possible. We will be loading the truck on Tuesday because we're pulling out on Wednesday morning because it's such a long drive. Um, so if you want to pre-order... For the Des Moines, Iowa show, call now. Um, we'll be off on Thursday and Friday. So the latest would be Monday, possibly Tuesday, if we have room left in the trailer. And just think of it, the big advantage uh, when you go to these shows, uh, if you don't see us at a show early, and we're not taking as much as Mike to a, a really big show, so we're taking a trailer, is you're going to save on shipping. So anything you order... Uh, you order early as you can because we're leaving. So we're we're starting to pack now. Did you notice Veronica was yawning back there? She, she thinks I missed it. She's bored. Uh, <laughs> come on, Jerry, stop talking. Let <laughs> Gina talk a little bit. But where was I? Well, anyway, you'll save a lot on, on shipping. And the other big thing is you just walk up to the, the table where we're displayed, mention your name, and they'll just give you whatever you ordered to already be packed ready for you. Yep, and if there's something that you, if you've been to the shows and know what we bring, if there's something that you want that we normally don't bring, give us a call and um, see if we can get yeah, it on the trailer space is you. definitely limited. We're not mm -hmm. taking our truck. We're taking the biggest trailer they have, but still, we're, space is very much limited. Right. We have another question. So we'll see you in um, Des Moines. Um, Armando, greetings from North Carolina. Two of the birds that I ordered from you all had two babies. 
I'm a first time owner. Is there anything special that needs to be done for the babies? Also, is it safe for the white homers to be in 25 degree temp? Okay. Um, Armando, I do remember your name and sending you the birds. Once again, thank you for your order. Um, there's really nothing you have to do. Uh, the hand in the cock, the parents are fully able to raise those young without any issue. Now, I think those birds are fairly young, uh, and if that's the case, it, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but the very first time, sometimes the second round, um, they're, if they're young pigeons, uh, is they, don't, they haven't learned yet what to do. Most important thing, what brings it to mind is a 25 degree temperature. The most is the young ones haven't learned to sit tight. In other words, they're squatting down and they open up their feathers so that the babies are up against the skin, uh, which keeps them warm. But if that, if the parents, whether it's the hen or the cock or both, don't set low, when it gets cold, uh, you will sometimes lose your young ones. By the second round, usually they know what to do much better, um, and you'll have no problem. As far as 25 degree, it uh, should not be an issue at all. Pigeons are in their best shape because they've come through the molt. Uh, they're just at the peak of their health, and uh, in colder weather, you have less of a bacterial problem, so less possibilities of uh, getting sick pigeons. As I mentioned earlier in the show, uh, I put my birds together this week, this weekend, and uh, when my uh, young ones are uh, starting to hatch out, it won't be uh, unusual for us to get zero or below zero weather. And uh, those young ones mostly survive. I must say it's a little harder, um, and I uh, add a, a base of straw, break up the straw, and stuff it down into the nest bowl, uh, and then the parents will also build on top of that. But with that little bit of extra straw, uh, it holds heat better uh, and uh, you'll have a better chance. So I hope I've answered your questions. And Armando, nice. I know I've talked to you on the phone before. Uh, always good to hear from you. And, uh, North Carolina, excuse me. It's okay. It's not very far from uh, Lancaster. Armando, you ought to give some thought to going to the Lancaster. Lancaster Pigeon Show. Uh, there'll be 1,500, 2,000 pigeons, some of the best in the country because that's a very competitive show. Draws people from all over New England and across the country. I know as far as California. So you ought to give some thought to it if you need some directions or information. Do you know the date on the Lancaster Show? Uh, the weekend of the uh, January 10th. Yeah, so well, maybe make some plans. The show is a Friday, Saturday. Um, get to meet us, uh, get to see some great, great pigeons, um, and meet some good pigeon people. So give us some thought, and I'll shut up now. Um, I wanted to mention that, you know, ev <laughs> no, <go ahead. laughs> every, um, every show we go to, a lot of the customers that call and talk to us or walk in, we get a lot of compliments on this show. And I just wanted to thank y'all for that. Um, we do it for you guys. He does it because he does most of the talking. He does it for you guys. He loves what he does. And I um, love to talk. <laughs> and he loves to talk. But pigeons have, he has always been in pigeons pretty much all his life. Um, and, you know, he's a giver and he loves to help people and he loves to help people with their pigeons. So um, I know everybody appreciates it. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of compliments. Somebody approached me at uh, the Big Apple show and, she said she's learned so much from you about pigeons, and when she started, she didn't know a lot, and she did. I'm not going to mention her name because I didn't tell her I was going to say it, but um, she truly appreciates it, as I'm sure everybody else does. So I know I joke a lot, but you... Okay. Well, let's change the subject, but thank you for the <laughs> uh, Two things, um, and they're not on our script, but I thought we would mention it, because this is the time of the year when people email and call us uh, asking for the new catalog because the new year is right around the corner. Uh, Gina and I have been working off and on for the better part of a year. Um, and it's Veronica. A, yeah, it's a huge, huge undertaking to make a new catalog. And uh, 
I've learned every year I used to say, well, this one will be, be easier because uh, when there aren't too many changes. <laughs> I was on vacation last week, and I took the, uh, the catalog with me, the updated catalog, and I think that's our second time or third time through. This will be our third. Yeah. Okay. So we've 100 and something pages. Every item, every word has to be read looking for punctuation. And right now the catalog is right around 124 pages. I went through all 20, 124 pages. I finished up last night. And I was sharing with uh, Gina that of the 124 pages, probably three, four, maybe five pages required no changes. And Veronica's over there shaking her head, <laughs> which means out of 124, 119 of them have to be updated. So we've gone through that. This is our third time. Now we still have to add the new products, and that requires a lot of work because Veronica has to make them fit one way or another, and I'm sure she shakes her head when I say, add this to this page, and she says, damn it, it won't fit, Jerry. <laughs> she but we're, we're working on a new catalog. <laughs> it won't be ready. I just can't imagine. Maybe end of January, maybe, we hope. Um, so it's a huge undertaking, but I think you'll... Uh, enjoy it. A lot of new things going in um, and a lot of information. In fact, I, have, I haven't shared it with Gina that I wrote a note. Uh, I think we're going to uh, have a full page of Jerry's tips um, because people seem to like that. It isn't, it isn't, <laughs> it isn't just a catalog. We'll it's a resource. A lot it of is. people get the catalog and just are amazed at what information is in there. And, a lot of it comes from you folks asking us questions, and we hear a question enough. Um, um, we're going to talk about it in the catalog or in the show. So if you don't have the current catalog, make sure you call us and get one because there is a lot of good information in there. Mm -hmm. And we still have the today's catalog. Too. Yeah, and by the way, the good way to change up the subject. Okay. But anyways. I had two things I wanted to talk about, but that's okay. Go ahead. You can continue. No, I forgot what the other I, one I was. thought so. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we did mention we're going to uh, the Des Moines show next week, um, but just wanted to mention real quick, in January we have the Fremont and the Lancaster show. So if you want to pre-order, um, you can start doing that now also for those shows. Some um, of the stuff that goes in our catalog, as I said before, comes from the customer. So knowing we're going to have a new catalog, um, if you have not uh, a good idea, um, we've got a number of products that are in our catalog that were uh, mentioned to us. We discussed it, looked at it, considered it, and a lot of them are in the catalog because mm -hmm. of folks like you. I met a guy um, at the Big Apple show this weekend, and there was a couple products he was talking about. I told him to message me, and mm -hmm. um, we'll see what we can do about getting them. So if there's something that you really like that's a great product, let us know, and we'll see if we can... Um, get a hold of it for you guys um i did want to also mention about the year bands you can pre-order year bands um although they don't ship until the end of december but if you order 100 or more bands and you want a certain number series you can do that um but you'll need to pre-order now that way once we get them we'll be able to send you the numbers that you want if you show pigeons uh, then you should consider NPA bands, National Pigeon Association, because it's getting close, and I think it is already in some cases, uh, if it's an NPA show, uh, or in some cases if it's not an NPA show. If you want to compete for uh, awards, or if you want to even enter a show in the future, uh, unless it's uh, NPA or, or rec another recognized national band, you won't be able to show. So NPA is uh, one. Uh, Racing homers are? IPBs. And? IPBR and IPBB. AU bands and mm -hmm. IF bands. Yep. Yeah. AU is American Racing Pigeon Union, so those are all for racing homer size only. And IP, um, IF. IF is International Federation. Once again, size 8 racing pigeons only. Uh, IPB stands for Independent Pigeon Breeders. It's our own band um, and um, 
if you have no plans on showing, no plans on racing ever, uh, IPB is perfectly acceptable. We sell an awful lot of mm -hmm. them. And uh, a little bit of an advantage, and I don't want to take anything away from the National Pigeon Association, but and I, this just came to my mind, but you know me. <laughs> if you find an AUIF right, or uh, NPA band, it's a two or three step process to track down who the owner is of that band, bird because number one, you've got, let's say, the AU, um, uh, and then you've got the IF. We, you might, we sold a band, you've got to call us. Or you call the AU. They told you to call us. So it's a two or three step process. An IPB band came from us. We we are the only ones in the United States, only ones in the world that sell IPB. So if you got online or somebody uh, knew what IPB means, it comes from us. It's one step. You call us. We'll tell you who bought that band right out of our own computer. Pretty good thought, wasn't it? Good thought. Um, I'll shut up now. You threw me off track, but that's okay. <laughs> um, while you're thinking about it, we were mentioning the pre-breeding. While you're thinking, are you thinking uh -huh. that? Yeah, I'm thinking. Um, I never recommend using an antibiotic to clean, quote, quote, your pigeons out before you start breeding. Makes no sense at all. You're wasting your money. You're creating a situation where birds will sooner or later become resistant to medications you're using. Um, and uh, if they don't, let's say you medicate uh, for uh, paratyphoid or something like that beforehand, uh, any bacterial infection, uh, if they don't have that bacterial infection during the process, the seven days you're medicating or whatever, uh, it did absolutely nothing because they didn't need it. But if you do want to add something to your drinking water before the breeding season starts, consider three in one. Canker coccidiosis, and worms. Those three medications or those three diseases are very common, uh, and the three-in-one contains no antibiotics, so nothing to build That's resistance okay. to. You remember? Their question reminded me what it was. Uh, um, the NPA bands this year are red. Okay. The IPB bands this year are red, and we have not received the AU and IF, so I don't know those colors. <laughs> And are they going to be the NBA narrow ones? No, oh, okay. they're talking. I'm sorry, they're talking. Um, the <laughs> NPA and IPB bands are on our website now, so you can see the colors on there. Um, okay, we got a question. Are the 2020 bands going to be narrow like this year? Didn't care for the narrow bands this year. Any thoughts on this? Narrow meaning the NPA bands? Yeah, they were smaller and narrow. Were they? It's, they're the same. The NPA bands are the same. Nothing, nothing has changed, mm -hmm. um, but I know for a fact the IPB are not now. No. A lot of people didn't like the NPA bands mm -hmm. last year, oh. or this current year, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, the NPA bands mm -hmm. are the same as this year's. Um, so, how, do you have any, everything on well, your we, list? One of the things we get away from um, is, and it's not... Gina's favorite uh, uh, part of the show, uh, but uh, we, we sit here and talk about pigeons all the time. Um, do you, if you have a question about any of us here at Foy's, whether it's Gina, myself, uh, Kim, Veronica, Kim, Sherry, Sherry Kim. especially Kim, um, and thank you. And uh, uh, if you have a, a question about any of our employees, we invite you to ask that question. Uh, whether it's about, as I said, whether it's Gina and Ask I or anybody anything. else. See, those You those must have been narrow. reading my notes. I was trying to um, oh. skip it. Okay. Anyway, I don't know whether you can see it, but these are the new bands for 2020 from the NPA. They're red, and they are narrow, and there are people who uh, just plain don't like them. Mm -hmm. um, guess what I forgot to mention at the beginning of the show? Can anybody guess? I'm going to let um, y'all ponder that a minute. We'll, well get back remember, to it's it. got a question for any of us, especially Gina. You just said that. Did I say that? Uh -huh. No, I said Kim. <laughs> you said anyone. Hey, if people, Anyways. people ask about visiting my lofts, 
uh, another two or three weeks, all of my lofts will be clean and ready to go. And now's the time if you want to stop by and take a look at it. And we uh, we have talked about it. it. Might just come to me. It might be a good time for us to take uh, a little bit of a video of uh, my pigeon lofts. Yeah, everybody keeps asking that. We need to do that. And when you go into my lofts, you'll <laughs> notice. That, I'm sorry, all different things like a different kinds of perchers, different kinds of this, different kinds of that, and it's. Um, a testimonial to the fact that the products we offer were, are being used by a pigeon person like myself. Um, and when you ask me, uh, a lot of times you want to know, which reminds me, um, you want to know what I recommend and what I'm using, and we'll be able to do that. And I was thinking also while I was on vacation, <laughs> don't mind me, Gina, <laughs> it's maybe in the catalog we can will list Jerry's best or Jerry's, you know, something like that. Because huh? okay. yeah. uh-huh. they do ask me a lot, what do you use? Well, and what medications do you use? Well, we can share that. <laughs> Did you see her look at me? <laughs> Anyways. Uh, Veronica, we're going to get you on. Maybe when Gina is gone on the next show, you'll sit here. And you can do what you're doing right from where you're at, right from over here. How about we discuss the the topic of the, okay. the show today? What is the topic of the show? Today? Our Black Friday and Cyber Monday oh, specials. Oh, <laughs> I just hate it now. I was listening. I hate Black Monday or Black Friday, or whatever. Uh, now it's no longer Black Friday. The, they were selling cars, it, and no longer is it Friday, folks. It's now Black Week. <laughs> the damn, they, they got a sale from Monday to next Sunday, and it's all called Black Week. Ah. Everything to me. make a buck, right? Don't call so, anyways, well, be careful. <laughs> We're kind of in business to make a buck. You know? Well, ours is really a special, though. Some people aren't really a special, you just think it is. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, anyways, Black Friday, um, our store will be closed. Thursday and Friday for Thanksgiving, and our Black Friday special is going to be online only. So you have to order on our website, and what's it going to be? Tell me. I forgot. I know you told me, but heck, that was (laughs) 10 minutes, 20 minutes ago. So, it's 20 for, mm, I just spit, sorry. Listen to this, folks. This is, (laughs) and they did this without even talking to me. So, 20% off everything with the exception of, of a few things. So, you can't get no discounts on feed, grit, um, any type of grains. Um, your bands are not going to be discounted, floor covering, or vaccines. Everything else is 20% off. No matter how much you buy, you buy the first item is 20% off? No matter what you buy, everything is 20% off. How long does it go? All day Friday? Or? Friday. So it starts Thursday at midnight? Midnight, correct. And what if it's like Saturday morning, but you just go home from work? and mm, Sorry. No pity. No. Till 11.59 p.m. Believe me, folks, she means it. <laughs> so. 20% 20, off on everything. That's not is a all. hell of a deal. Huh? That's not all. So, so on top of 20, 20% off. Why is your face all red? <laughs> Did you notice my face was red when I got back from vacation? You didn't I didn't. Notice? I have this, to show you my feet. I and this is the them. first time I've seen you? Yeah. Okay. okay. So, anyways, um, on top of 20% off of everything, with a few exceptions that I mentioned, um, also... The first 100 customers that order, if your order is $50 or more, you get a $25 gift certificate with your order. First 100. First 100. How much? $25? $25 gift certificate, yes. We're just giving it to you for a future order. Why don't we make it to like first 50? No, nope, first 100. We already discussed it. It's done. You didn't discuss it with me. I use on vacation. (laughs) So that's what it's going to be. Can't change it now. It's already out there, right? When does it start? Friday, Black Friday. So Thursday at 
12 a.m. to Friday at 11.59 p.m. But I'm going to be on vacation. Let's say hypothetically, I'm going to be like I was on vacation out of the country last week. Sorry, You mean you. I lose? You lose. I should have canceled my <laughs> trip to get to... Sorry for you. <laughs> okay. That's your bad luck. All right, all right. We did that last year, didn't we? Similar, yes. But it's better this year than last year. Yes. Why? I don't know. I don't remember last year. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember yesterday. Remember, I was on vacation last year right around this time. And this trip, I didn't get to dance with any celebrity. <laughs> I was telling the story at the Lions Club about me and the celebrity and Jackie, one of the members. Alicia she, Keys. She says to me, boy, you're sure milking that story. <laughs> I my last year I danced with what's her Alicia name? Keys. Alicia Keys on a cruise ship. Uh, this time I went on a cruise ship and um, didn't dance with anybody. And he didn't even know who she was no, when he danced with her. No, he found out after. But I did dance with somebody on the elevator. Did you? Yeah, there were, I'm there not were some, surprised. There were some women on the and one of them you could hear the music going down on the elevator. She was bebopping her head. And I, I said, "Come on, let's go!" And we were dancing on the elevator. Okay. Not surprised. Not a lot all. of questions this week. I suppose they're all making just pumpkin listening. pies and stuff like Probably. that. Probably. I was home this morning cooking. So. You want me to bring anything? Nope, nothing. Everything's gonna be taken care of. Looking forward to it. So, anyways, um, so that's Black Friday. Once again, we will not be at work Friday, so everything is online. Um, so place your orders online. If you do put something on your order that can't be shipped free, it will be a separate order, and you'll probably get an email or phone call, and you'll have to pay shipping on that so item. No feed, no grit. Feed, grit, grains, floor covering, floor. vaccines, year bands. Why not vaccines? Because that's how it is. Because you didn't discuss it with me. Okay. That's well, just how it is. <laughs> woman do it's becoming a woman-dominated world. In fact, with the presidential election, there's a lot of very well-qualified women, right? Yes, there is. That would be great. Because I would love to and see a woman. Next. President. Um, so... Cyber Monday is, as you know, Monday, and that we will be at work, but all orders have to be placed online to get the Cyber Monday special. Um, will be no phone orders, everything on online. Um, so if you call, you can ask this question, but you can't place the order online to get the Cyber Monday special. And if you're an old fogey like me, I don't even know how to go online and place an order. So if you're an old fogey or up in Maine, we call them old farts. If you're an old fart, get your daughter or your son to order for you. Or your grandchild. Or your grand. Oh, yeah. There you go. In fact, I think one or at least two of my great grandchildren could probably get online and order. A <laughs> couple of them could, yeah. So, we can't tell you what the Cyber Monday special is right now. But He don't even know. I didn't even tell him because I didn't want him to slip and tell y'all. Will you tell me after the show? Maybe, because you might tell somebody if they call you. <laughs> what, not after this show. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't so know. Cyber Monday, it, you, keep an eye out on our Facebook page and the website. It'll be posted on there. Um, starts midnight, Monday morning, or 12 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. Monday. Right? Yeah, I think I said that right. Yep. Um, so keep an eye out. That's also going to be a good sale. Um, if you have any questions, um, Monday you can give us a call. But like I said, the order has to be placed online. Right? Yep. Nobody nobody remembers what I forgot to say at the beginning of the show, huh? Do you That's because know everybody pays attention to me. And not me. I know. <laughs> do you want me to but do I, bet, I bet once I say it, they're going to remember. Believe me. Tina, without you, this would not be the show it is. You know it, and I know Anyways. it. Anyways. Huh? Anyways, Ghost well, that, Dealers. That is the truth. That is right? The truth. Didn't I forget? Ghost Dealers. 
Win, yeah. lose, or draw, they still my team. <laughs> we won. We won last Sunday. Yeah, we of did. course the team we beat it hasn't won. <laughs> hasn't won a game this year. Anyways, we ain't gonna go into it. But no. go Steelers. <laughs> go Steelers and go Penguins. Yes. If and I was probably too late, <laughs> but talking about that, I watched the Steeler games and uh, we um, just changed quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. But if you have the opportunity and a picture of the past quarterback comes up, his name is? Ben? The one, no, no, one after, oh. the one we had, and then we switched it at, oh. at, at the half this last game. Oh, yes. His name is, anyways. Yes. Like if you Rudolph see, yeah, Rudolph. Rudolph, that's his name. Last yeah. name is Rudolph. You look. Let's go look it up. He and Sidney Crosby. With helmets on or uh-huh. twins. Or it could be that Sidney Crosby, you'll notice he's okay. he's injured and he's out for the year. I think he's playing for the Steelers. <laughs> you look, they look exactly alike. They do look alike now yeah. that you say that. They really do. Especially wow. with their helmets on. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? Or are we cutting the show down early because nobody's asking any questions? Maybe we've answered every question, and it might be time to shut the show down. Maybe. No, hmm. don't any questions, you know. Any thoughts on that? <laughs> uh, I'm just sticking a plug for Jerry. Um, I sell racing homers, and if you're looking to add stock to your uh, breeding loft, I have some great, great racing pigeons. Um, I have some really pretty all different colored rollers i have white racing homers and i have colored racing homers for sale um, with the uh, whites or with any of them if you want to order 2020 birds uh, now is the time to place an <laughs> order no, oh and somebody's come you're laughing at something but well, anyway, place place your order for young ones for next year as early as you can. I've already got orders for right around 140 white young ones, and I have an order for 16 race quality ones. So if you are thinking you'd like to order some young ones from Foys, um, give me give Foys a call. They'll give you my home phone number, and you can pre-order, and I ship them out in the sequence that we receive the order. I'm uh, just trying to fill in some space there. Thank you. And I appreciate that. Mark heard my plea and asked for questions. <laughs> he did. What, well, why don't you? Mark asked, um, if I were to order some products today, when would I get them with the holiday this week? My brother recommended using FedEx because he said they got his products to him in a day or two. Well, Mark, it all depends where you live, what part of the country, U.S. you live in. Um some people get their stuff the next day, some two days, some four days. It all depends where you live. Um, but being... The holiday weekend um, actually has no bearing on getting the time frame. It does. Uh, except we're closed. But if they order... You know, but uh, Thursday, uh, they don't run Thursday. No mail, but then they would get... But, but anyway. Right, Friday or Monday. So, yeah. So it just depends when you order where you live. We guarantee to ship out, if you place the order by 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we guarantee that your order gets out that day. Anytime after 2, there's no guarantee that it gets out. But usually if you order by up to 3.30 about, if it's not a huge order, then we usually get mm-hmm. it out the same day. And we ship both FedEx, uh, prior to, uh, we ship the post office and we ship UPS. But... The thing to keep in mind, and uh, I've learned this because I've shipped pigeons a lot. Uh, I might ship pigeons, we're in Pennsylvania, I might ship the pigeons to Ohio, and it takes two days. I have shipped pigeons to Los Angeles, California, and they got them the next day. It's all tied into where you live and the airport uh, that they're flying into as it applies to UPS or FedEx, uh, so you never know. Uh, sometimes one customer will get it in two days, some days one day. So, mm-hmm. uh, but we do ship a lot of FedEx. I know that. 
Yes. Here's a question we should have thought of. Mm -hmm. Norm asks, can orders placed on Friday be brought to Des Moines? Yeah, I don't see why not. Well, to yeah. get them discounts? Uh-huh. You're making an executive decision? I am. Okay. So, Norm, your answer is? Yes. Only thing you're going to have to put in the um, little comment section on um, online when you place the order that you would like it taken to Des Moines. Be sure to do that. Mm -hmm. Or whatever show. So, if you're going to be in Des Moines, we hope you do. And uh, I don't think we mentioned that... Uh, we hope, now, everybody watching this show knows we're going to be there, but if you're watching the show, please share the news with you, anybody else that you know is going to be uh, at the Iowa show, uh, that they can place an even, an even bigger incentive. Uh, if they call on Friday, they get 20% off almost everything. We Not call to, online. Uh, um, go ahead, explain it. They know. It it's online straight. orders. You can't call. Okay. So if they uh, send an order online on Friday, mm -hmm. they get a 20% discount and a $25 gift certificate. Gift wow. If the order's over $50. Plus, the, plus they don't pay shipping. What a deal. If it goes to Iowa, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We got another question. I'm looking at a question. I was, right, I was laughing, too. Um, we travel with our two pet pigeons. They both get car sick. Any idea how to prevent it or any remedies to help? Go, go a, to the drugstore. And you know those little patches you get so you don't get seasick? Mm -hmm. Well, get them and put one on each bird's leg. I'm not saying it'll work, but it might work because it works on, you know, you see everybody on this, on a ship when we're traveling with those little patches behind their ear, and it must work from, you, must. Could, buy, you could buy and put a half of one on their foot, it might help. That's a new one, huh? Yeah, I've never, never heard that heard question. That. Keith? Yeah. Kira. Kira's, Kira's bunny ears. Kira's bunny ears. We travel with our two pet pigeons. <laughs> that reminds me. Remember um, Vicky, the one that buys Vicky. feed from us, uh -huh. Vicky mm -hmm. Michaels. <laughs> she, she very soft-hearted. She she calls me. What does she call me? The Grim Reaper. Because <laughs> when she gets a bird that's beyond any help at all, she brings it to me and out and and she says, "Don't even tell me what you're going to do." <laughs> but I know you are the Grim Reaper. <laughs> so, oh, what I was going to laugh about them taking the pigeons, we're looking on the wall there, uh, two pet pigeons with them in the car. Vicki Michaels had one bird who it had what we call splayed leg. One leg went all the way out and could never be brought back. She built a harness that would hang from the mirror in, in her car and put that bird in the harness and everywhere she went <laughs> the bird went with her and it would be swinging in the car i don't think it got car sick though <laughs> no i don't think so oh, folks don't mind us we're having a good old time uh boys on facebook <laughs> tell your friends about it um we were so appreciative of the fact that we have so many uh, thousands of people who watch mm -hmm. us and comment on us, and um, we appreciate it. And I suppose, you know, we don't talk too much about our own company, and uh, it's for a reason. Um, we're doing this, as Kim's, Kim, as Gina, Gina said at the very beginning of the <laughs> show, we're doing this, uh, you can tell, we have fun doing it, except for Veronica, it's work to her. But we, we enjoy we enjoy doing it, have a lot of fun, um, and we're not looking, certainly it's good for business, there's no question about that, but it's not why we're doing it, business was good before, it's a little bit better now, no question about it, um, but we do it because we enjoy it, and we think you do too. Good luck with the, the Corsic Pigeons. <laughs> We, I, uh, we ought to print that one and put it in the catalog. <laughs> and you've thought it 
you thought you heard all the questions. How about this one? <laughs> oh. So if you have any um, future, any suggestions for a future show, let Jerry or I know. Um, and we'll be more than happy to show you a product, talk about the product, talk about anything about the pigeons that you want to talk about. Um, just let us know. We have another question. Yep. Um, hi, Jerry. I'm looking for a canker pigeon product with was safe for breeding or using throughout the years. Which one would you recommend? I don't know. And I think it mentions it in the catalog, too. Ronadazole. Ronadazole is safe to use oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. before and during breeding season, uh, breeding season for canker. Uh, but we sell a 10% and a 25%. Uh, I would recommend uh, the 10% because you're using it um, before breeding season, um, and it's not an antibiotic. They're not going to build up a resistance to it. But I tell people, if you're using it for what you're describing, go with the 10%. If you absolutely know you have canker or you have a, a long history of canker in your pigeons, go with the 25%. Either one of them will do the job. One's less expensive than the other. Okay. So our next show is going to be next Friday, December 6th. Um, you won't be there. I won't be there. I'll be in Iowa. And I haven't talked to um, Sherry yet, but um, we I'm not sure because both the key people in our company, Gina and Kim, are not going to be here. So I'm going to ask Sherry, but she may not, She may be able to do part of the show because she's going to be answering the phones too. Mm -hmm. So, Or you can get a special guest. We'll see. Somebody. Yeah, so no, it'll be Jerry and somebody. Do uh, don't mind me, I'm thinking. Get Okert. He could probably do something. Hasn't he done that before? No, not no. yet. Not. Maybe I can ask we him. didn't bring him in. Dr. Bosa. But, yeah. He was here in person, but not. I don't know what their time difference is. But it'll be Jerry and maybe somebody. And the guest. Jerry and guest. Maybe, and the guest. Well, I might do it myself. I don't, I probably Good want luck. all this stuff to talk about, wouldn't I? No. <laughs> yeah, you might. They might have to throw in some questions or something. All right, well, it's four o'clock, but if you, if you want to, uh, if you have a question, want to sneak in, we're in no hurry. That's one of the nice things about where the owners, where the contributors, where the guests, our producer works for us. <laughs> so, so if we want to go to 403 or 420, did you notice that on television now? A lot of the shows, start a little early, two or three minutes early. I didn't. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the reason for that is they're trying to get a jump on the competition. So if the show starts at uh, one fifty-six, they're already four minutes into the show, and you might be already hooked before really? the next one starts. Oh, yeah. Oh, so that's why I see, see the idea about me doing the pre-show? I, I do. Okay. Was that a question from somebody, or they, nope. just, they went away? It oh, went did away. Gina leave you a note? I mean, uh, Veronica, she did. You know, <laughs> did she curse or anything? No, she doesn't mm -hmm. curse out loud. Well, I think um, <laughs> see, since we haven't got any questions, um, maybe we should mention the fact that uh, we hope they have a nice Thanksgiving. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Hope everybody enjoys their day. Don't overfeed your pigeons just because it's Thanksgiving. Um, now, my grand grandson is not watching the show, I don't think, but uh, I, th I might have shared it with you. Um, when I went away last Saturday, a week from last Saturday, I asked Jaden to take care of my birds. Um, as always, I mentioned I don't overfeed them. Well, when I got back, I went out to the lofts on Sunday to feed my pigeons. I did not feed them on Sunday. I did not feed them on Monday. I did not feed him today because <laughs> he put so much feed into the feeders every day. The feed was all over the floor. I know it sounds gruesome and goes against what we all believe. I took their feeders out on Sunday, um, which were still full of feed, and I haven't 
fed those birds. I'm forcing them to eat everything that's on the floor. Sounds gross, but uh, that's one of the ways they develop humidities. So I haven't had, that's how much he fed the birds. I, he fed them Saturday. I did not feed them Sunday. I did not feed them Monday. I did not feed them Tuesday. Uh, they might get some feed tomorrow when the floor is all cleaned up. So. Well, it's 4.02. You think we should yes, leave? I oh, do we were going to wish everybody should. a happy Thanksgiving. Yes, we was. How do we tie in? I wonder if there are people who have meat pigeons who have pigeons for Thanksgiving. Probably. I'm sure there are. Have, you know, would you eat pigeon if you had the chance? I probably would. So If, if the, I didn't know what it was. <laughs> I've asked a number of people because I don't know how to process uh, a pigeon squab. Um... Uh, so if you have, if you raise quads, if you would consider butchering one or two for me, I would pay for the expense of the bird. I'd pay for the shipping. I would just like to taste pigeon. I never had. And people, you know, they said, yuck. Well, what the heck? We eat chicken eggs. The whole right. process is the same. They all go through their butt. No matter what you say, that's the way it works, right? On well, that note... Everybody have a happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> On that note, On that the note. last word of the show is but. <laughs> B-U-T-T. -T. <laughs> hey, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Enjoyed the show. We giggled a lot. I uh, hope you uh, maybe we might have brought a smile to your face. And if you want to order anything, 724-843-6889 is FOIS. Do we have an email address? Black Friday. On Friday, so, mm -hmm. which is actually online, and then Cyber Monday on Monday. Make sure you look out for them great deals. If you have any questions, call Foy's and um, ask, ask for Jim. Just don't ask for Veronica. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what Veronica will say? One moment, please. <laughs> Let me connect you. How may I direct your call? <laughs> See you, folks. <laughs>